Hello and welcome to coverage of Grand Prix Chicago. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe, I'm in the booth with Ben Second. We are underway in the quarterfinals here. Jared Betcher, number 23 in the top 25 pro rankings versus JD Klamparans. Both of these players play in mono black, although you see actually one says mono black, one says black. There's a reason for that. Jared's actually got a little bit of red right. he, he in has, his deck. Yeah, he has like three <laughs> different red cards in his main deck. Um, he has uh, some dread boars. He has a Museum Morton, uh, Mortars oh, and turns. a Ractus Return exactly. as a red splash. Um, Jadine has it's mono black. She only has swamps and mutavolts as her lands. Yeah, um, her, her deck's a little more streamlined, a little more simple. Maybe Jared has a little more power because of the red, uh, you know, at the top end with that Rakdos' return. Yeah, if, if he's able to draw the Rakdos' return and, and, and get it off for a reasonable amount, it's going to be, like, significant um, in, in the matchup. But um, the Jadine is, is, is far from kind of uh, helpless against it. She, she has a line sideboard that has cards like Duress and, and actually she even has... All right, so she led things off with the thoughts. He's took away Underworld Connections. That's pretty standard, although Jared Betcher followed up with Pack Rat here, and Jadine hasn't answered it as of yet. Yeah, that's that's kind of interesting. That the only thing I would say that she could have thought sees the Pack Rat. She saw, saw it, so it, it seems to be pretty obvious that she has a Barb Light um, to deal with it. Otherwise, she probably would have killed it straight away. Yeah, and that's really the only answer there that she can have. Like, she can't let Jared untap, maybe hit an untapped land, and then have access to a second rat. Though, he does have access to a second <laughs> rat even after that one got bile blighted. Right. And there it is. And she's going to use Hero's Downfall to take out the rat. So, this is all pretty standard issue stuff for the mono black mirror. It is attrition -y. Oh, very, very much so. It, it really comes down to who has the last card advantage engine standing at the end of like all the discard that comes. Now, one of the other differences that you'll see in these mono black lists sometimes, and, and it is expressed here as well, is Jadine is playing Lifebane Zombies, where Jared is playing um, Night Veil Spectres instead. So what, what, what favors what in the mirror? In, in the mirror, the Night Veil Spectres are stronger. I mean, like, one of the reasons why um, that uh, Lifebane Zombies has become a little bit more popular is, one, the rise of Jun Monsters, which is really good, good against. Also, it actually happens to be a pretty effective clock versus the control decks and the mono blue decks, and so that, that's another reason why it's actually quite good. All right, so Jadine plays her fourth land. And I think she just attacked with that Mutavolt. Is that what we're seeing? Yeah, I think and so. And that's it. Passes the turn back. And Jared's missing land drops here. He draws, he says go. She looks like Jadine's pretty content to start keep attacking here and uh, maybe pressure Jared with his mana influence try to make that a little worse for him in any future draws along those lines here it is though underworld connections for Jadine yep. is going to keep things moving she's going to activate her connections right away drop her down to 17 life doesn't play a land this turn and either does Jared Betcher so the, the both players are stumbling a little bit Jadine's the one with the connections here yeah I mean Jadine's going to like pull ahead here unless Jared can draw a land soon he's going to be in deep trouble. Um, really, Jared's uh, land position really shows why, um, it, like, you know, this is the risk wow. you, you take playing, like, two colors. Yeah, look at, yeah, exactly, because you take a look, and that temple isn't casting anything in his hand right now. Yeah. It's basically colorless, and he peels the swamp off the top, but his hand looks pretty nice here. He can play a Desecration Demon here. Right. The reason why uh, Jared happens to be playing Blue Red Temple is he wanted another Scry land in his deck um, that produced red, and so what the uh, Temple of Epiphany does is allow him to still have a, a red source that can be used to cast Night Veil Spectre. Right. Unfortunately, it doesn't cast the black spells in his deck, and Hero's Downfall is going to take down the big desecration demon and Jadine's gonna get in there, drop Jared Betcher down to eight, and that's gonna do it. Jadine Comparance takes game one in quick fashion. A nice smile there from Jadine as well. That's gotta feel good. Yeah, no, I mean, look, this is a, this is a really good game to steal. I mean, he, he, she was not on the play. Thanks, Rashad. One game one last time. Jump into our Yuta Takahashi versus Oscar Jones match. To be fair to Rashad, he didn't have another option. <laughs> But it uh, looks like that game just ended. We're going to get a, an update there to figure out who it is that won that game. We can take a look at our feature match area. Who did? Utah won game one versus Oscar there. Now I can tell you 
that Oscar's playing for a lot here. Uh, Oscar's a, a young, up-and-coming Magic player. He's already got one top eight uh, this season. It was in Modern. He was playing Pod. Uh, now he's playing sort of his signature deck, Mono Blue, and he's found himself in his second top eight. So he's looking to make a run for Silver, okay? He's going to get four points here for top eighting, but he needs six. If he gets to six, that will qualify him for a, a gr he will be qualified for three pro tours if oh, he wow. gets to six. It'll get him for Portland, it'll get him for Honolulu, and whatever the next one is after that. If he does not get here today or on the next two, if he doesn't meet that threshold, he only gets qualified for Honolulu. Right. So it's a big swing for, for this young man, and he's, uh, he's definitely looking, he's like, he basically said, he's like, look, I can win one match here, and then get a top 64 in DC, in DC or in um, in Boston, or I can win two matches here and just not have to <laughs> worry about it, or I can lose here and get a top 32 and get in. He's still got one GP slot of right. points to fill, so he's not dealing with that where he's got to bump out some points, but uh, being down a game here in the top eight, uh, obviously not the way that he wanted to start. Now, back on our main match here, players are sideboarding, and uh, Jared stumbled for a few turns, and Jadine capitalized in a big way yep. and is looking to advance to the semifinals past really, you know, you mentioned it a little while ago, Ben. Jared Betcher, just one of the best rookie seasons we've seen. Yeah, no, like absolutely stunning rookie season, not just at the Grand Prix level. At the Pro Tour level, he has two top 16s. Including like, the ninth. Right, including the ninth, and he was so close. Like, he, he had a couple of winning ins that he, like, that he missed just to, uh, missed the last one at uh, Pro Tour Journey into Knicks. Mm -hmm. um, but a fantastic like start, already locked for Platinum. Very, very close to like an unassailable lead in the Rookie of the, Le Rookie of the Year. This would just like add it, like if, if you could just win this or like get very, very close, he could really just put it out of reach. Yeah. Um, so we have our, like, the, the sideboards and obviously you would, you would think that like a, the Black Red deck might actually have a few more um, cards to bring in. So uh, Jared has uh, three duress, um, a Sire of Insanity I think that he's going to bring in because actually like it happens to be like quite a good threat um, if, you can, if you're on the play basically you can like play it, empty your opponent's hand and then you have the threat and they don't have anything. Um, here's another Rakdos return to add to the one in his main deck. Here's one Erebos. Um, and I think, like, he may bring in something, uh, the other ultimate price in Silence of Believers. Silence, both those cards, like, deal with um, things like the demons from uh, Jadine's deck. The thing with Jadine's deck is she has a much more streamlined, like, sideboard. She has four duress, so an extra duress. She has read the bones, which kind of, like, complements, basically acts as... Um, Acts as the uh, underworld connections like five and six, not exactly, but like they, they give them card advantage in, in that similar way. Um, an extra Erebos, so she has two Erebos in, in uh, sideboard, and a Dark Betrayal. Dark, Dark Betrayal, like one of the most efficient ways to deal with Pack Rat, Night Bell Spectre, Desecration Demon, just one mana. Like having that instant speed, mana. yeah. It's it's actually like probably one of the reasons why like if, like she's, she can kind of match one for one against. Uh, Jared, who has an extra color. All right. Players are idly uh, chatting uh, with each other, like but they seem like they're having a fun time, which you should if you're in the top eight, though. I mean, yeah. Yeah, the nerves can get you a little, too. Uh, it's a lot on the line here. The, I mean, I, I understand. the good thing for them is, like, <laughs> maybe, like the, the big part of the nerves are gone. I mean, in, in some ways, you've gotten the slot, you've gotten the flight. Um, you, you're, you're already going to the Pro Tour. Now, I'm not saying that like they don't want to win. They I absolutely want to win. Yeah, money's a thing. Yeah, money is a thing. I mean, maybe maybe <laughs> Jared could even get a new Pokemon hat. <laughs> <if he laughs> I, I think this one has done him pretty well. I would, get, I would I, get rid of it for anything. I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Make that part of his body. So it looks like both players are going to six. That's fair, at least. It is fair. What does that do to the matchup? Not much. I mean, not a lot. The only thing that I would say is that the way that um, Jadine has her sideboard configured with two read the bones um, extra, it helps her a little bit being okay. low, low amounts of cards. She has a couple more like hints of getting cut in and recovering it. Um, as we were saying before, it, this is a slug fist of, of, of attrition. I mean, now they all have their, their full amounts of discard spells. And so, like... 
you know, being able to two for one at a crucial stage is really, really important. Looks like they're having some fun with the crowd. You can get a look at the crowd too. We've got a really nice uh, stage set up here at the GP level where the the viewer area is elevated above the tables. You can see all the, the legs, <laughs> you know, <laughs> circling around and, and people will, will jam up there to watch the top eight. It's a really cool uh, viewing experience uh, for people at home. Let's take a look back at our Yuta Takahashi versus Oscar Jones match. And uh, once again, Yuta up a game here and it looks like he's on his second thought seas. Right, the first one getting um, a one drop from his hand of uh, the... Getting the judges familiar judges there. Judges familiar. Mm -hmm. um, but the second one, it's like either you get a Thassa, a Bident, or a Cloudfin Raptor. Um, it really kind of, I, I would tend to think Thassa would be the, the obvious choice here, but I think you know, it does depend on the, the hand of what uh, Yuta has. Oscar actually with a pretty good, um, a pretty good draw. Just you know, he 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 had all the curve. All right, Biden gone. But gets to play. Thassa. Now Thassa, one of the harder cards to, for um, you to to get rid of. He might not actually even have a way of like easily getting rid of Thassa. It's, it could just be impossible. I mean, outside of. Well, is there anything? I don't think there's anything, like, uh, funnily enough, uh, Jared has uh, um, Jared has a Silence of Believers that, like, could be in Yuta's side, but I don't know if Yuta actually has a, a Silence of Believers. That would actually get rid of it. That's interesting. Okay, so I think both, they're both players are on six, six cards on our main feature match, and so Jared has opened with a Thought Seize. A Thought Seize, and he's going to take away the, the obvious target, yep. which, of course, is Underworld Connections. Sometimes, you know, based on what the player has, they'll take something that doesn't seem obvious, but that Underworld Connections is just such a key card here. Here's another thought sees, and that is going to get a look at Ultimate Price, Heroes, Downfall, and a Pack Rat. So, again, completely depends on what Jared Betcher has in his hand here, what he's going to take. What did he take? He, he took the uh, hero, Heroes Downfall. Okay. Which Maybe says he's got his own Pack Rat, or what are we looking at here? I, th I think he's likely to just have something, uh, yeah, like yeah. a removal spell for ah, the Pack Rat. Ah, but no land drop here, so... Ultimate Price takes down the Pack Rat. Oh, and then another Pack Rat. So if uh, wow, very nice. If if Jared does not have another removal spell, and he can't oh, find a land drop oh, either. This this could be the end. This could be very very Good. bad for our potential Rookie of the Year, Jared Betcher. JD Comparins is going to take over this game with Pack Rat if he doesn't find something right quick. Jared's has having some like just uh, yeah. terrible mana issues in, in in this matchup. Maybe a bio blight here. Yeah, he 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 really has one. He kind of has that. Oh, and it's wow! It's and he's over. just gonna scoop it up, and Jadine Klumparns is gonna advance to the semifinals. So Jared's gonna have to settle for yet another top eight for the season. But Jadine still has her eyes on the trophy. So we'll keep an eye on that as we move forward, but let's go over to our secondary future match here. Yuta Takahashi, already with a couple of uh, GP top eights this season, but they're not quite as visible. Th they were both uh, in J one in Japan, one in Hong Kong, I believe. Yeah. Um, where, you know, we don't have as much coverage and stuff. Uh, so this might be the first time you've, you've watched him play. Uh, he doesn't play quite as often as he used to, but uh, this guy's an accomplished player. Yeah. He's, he's actually got a second at a pro tour. He does. Um, he, he came second, actually, at the two-headed giant pro tour, um, uh, losing to uh, Chris Lockman and uh, out the coverage's uh, own Jacob Van Lunen. That's right. All right, here come the beats by Oscar Jones here. He's got a Tidebinder Mage, and he's got a Cloudfin Raptor. We're, we're getting the, uh, the life totals and stuff on the screen once our, uh, once our table judge gets those entered into the computer for you, obviously a super important piece of information when viewing a race like this. Yeah. But uh, in comes the team here, and a Night Veil Spectre is going to kind of blunt the assault here from Oscar Jones. Takahashi could have made a rat if he wanted, but he decided that he wanted to have a Night Veil Spectre, which is just really going to put a, a damper on the attacks here yeah, if, from if, Oscar. If Oscar can get another blue uh, mana symbol into play, he can start attacking with the um, with his Thassa. I mean, it, it, 
it, it seems like he, he may actually be, like, do, have done quite a lot of damage. Okay, so I'm sure that's a rapid hybridization right. there. So that's going to make a 3-3, but it's going to be on the ground. Obviously, that is not a fairy. Oh, he so does he's not have flying. He's, he's, he kept the card that uh, was... So that if he he's... Tried. Okay, well, if this is four mana, it's either Master Waves or Biden of Thassa, right? Yeah, and it, and I think if it's if it's actually Biden, it's it's oh wow. Uh, there's one other option, yeah, domestication. Even better, actually, because it allows an attack with everything. That's um, right, including Thassa. Right, which is which is huge. Actually, it's probably one of the best draws he could have had at this point. Yeah, that was nine mana. That judge better get that life total up there quick, because <laughs> I don't think there's going to be a life total here for long. Yeah, I I, I I I'm pretty sure there's almost no amount of life that uh, Yuta could have been on that doesn't make the next attack uh, like basically fatal. Um, exactly. Be because he has enough mana to, to make two of his uh, creatures unblockable, most likely the Thassa and um, you know another creature. If he doesn't want to take the risk, he can also just make the three power and a two power creature unblockable. That way if something gets killed, he can still get in. Really what Yuda needs is uh, he needs so something to, to reduce the amount of pips in play. No, he doesn't look. He looks like he he's up too. So yeah, yeah it's really, really too far behind. It. Yeah, yeah, you, you were right, Ben. I mean, it, it made sense that after taking <laughs> nine <laughs> damage that turn, and plus we had seen an attack for four before that, that he was going to be at very low life total. So let's go to game three. So like, this is like obviously a very, very classic match in the um, classic matchup, like mono blue versus mono black. Um, you got Ta Takahashi has like Farik's, uh, Farika's Cure, Doom Blade, and Drown and Sorrow to really, really kind of put a hurting onto uh, Oscar's deck, um, as well as Life Bane Zombie. Life Bane Zombie being a pretty common sideboard cut in um, to, against the the Mono Blue decks because it provides a really, really fast clock. Taking a look at the feature match area, though, th th we, we've moved a couple of players over so we can watch their match after Oscar and uh, Takahashi are finished, but that's not them there. Yeah. So, so. Th this matchup you're actually seeing in the, in the front table now is uh, Steve Wise versus Steve Rubin. Um, Steve fight. Oh, and actually, I'm just making sure that's tr that's actually no, it's no, it's not actually. It's uh, Steve Rubin versus Tyler. Yes, that's right. Is it Tyler Bloom? Tyler Bloom versus S Steve Rubin. Um, so it's a it's basically a mono black um, matchup. Um, one. One of the things is uh, Steve Rubin basically has um, is splashing a little bit of green um, for uh, abrupt decay as well as uh, some other like Golgari charms in the sideboard. Okay. So we'll we'll be popping in on that one after this one's done. But let's keep an eye on Yuta Takahashi versus Oscar Jones here as we're getting a game three, mono black for Takahashi versus mono blue for Oscar Jones. Kind of two two of the most popular decks from uh, the duration of the standard format. Again, Oscar has uh, two GP top eights this season, as does Yuya, Yuta, excuse me. As you said before, Oscar playing for a lot here. A like lot. If, if he can get to the finals, he get he essentially, it's it's a double PTQ win for him. Yes, that's right. And he's gonna, that would qualify him for Portland, for Honolulu, and for the, for the Pro Tour after that. If he doesn't, he's got work to do. He has, right. he's not qualified for Portland, so he doesn't get those pro points currently. So he, out of the next two GPs, if he were to lose this match, has quite a lot of work to do. Now, he doesn't need much. He needs either, depending on where he finishes, he needs either a top 64 or top 32, you know, but he needs a, a, a cash money finish at one of the last two GPs, and he is going to both, I asked him. It's good to see a, a lot of the younger players like hungry to really hunt, like, Get, make their name on the Pro Tour. Oh, he's definitely that. Yeah, he kind of broke in um, when he uh, he had the uh, Magic Online Championship. He played in, in, in that, and, and that was the first time that we kind of got a chance to see Oscar play. And uh, he's been playing at a high level since. He's a young dude, though. I think he's 17, 18. Like, he, he's still in school, so... Okay. All right, looks like we're <laughs> we're kind of like inceptioning here. So <laughs> we're looking back at our main match, which is now Tyler Bloom and Steven Rubin. But we're just looking at them while, while we resolve mulligans on our secondary match. We're going to be sticking on that one, though, to see who wins. And uh, this looks like ye old mono black mirror here. 
Thought sees you, thought sees you, take your pack, pack rat. Rats. Yeah. <laughs> their, their graveyards are identical. Yeah. <laughs> but as we said before, Steve Rubin is the one with the green splash in his deck. So it uh, you know, gives him the Underworld Connections advantage since he can like use his Abrupt Decays to, to, to basically deal with it. Tyler Bloom just with a, a Temple of Malady, but like the, the, the Temple does nothing in his deck. He doesn't actually have any green cards. So yeah, who's having fun? <laughs> the hot seas, the hot seas, No the one's going to cast any duress. spells this game. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so, like, almost definitely going to take one of the uh, connections here. Like, the other option is Bob Light, and unless... He really, really thinks he's going to press an advantage with uh, yeah, some with pack, a, rat pack rat or something, something like that. Yeah. He, mm -hmm. I, I think he'll uh, go for the slower card. Interesting to note, though, the Tyler does not actually have uh, a third land, so it's possible that if he does have pack rat, he he'll take the Bob Light and try and like capitalize on the fact that he's like lower land. He did. He did. So that really, really kind of like is an indication of one or two things. Either he has. Um, a pack rat or possibly even a lifebane zombie. Yeah, it's kind of kind of stinky for him though. Uh, he had to play a guild gate there. Oh. oh All right, so he was going to try to to ha hammer home there with the uh Well, that's actually interesting. Really? The desecration demon doesn't care about bioblight at all. No, I I, I, g I guess he just wanted to, to improve like the, the possibility of his draw here. I'm not sure exactly. As it, as it turns <laughs> out, he actually drew a pack rat. So he kind of like I he he somehow foresaw his uh That that was uh Wow. Well, so and, and I mean, he must have known somehow. <laughs> um, so Tyler didn't get another land, no. so uh, this is going to be get out of hand. I mean, like, unless he draws a Bob Light in essentially two turns. Instead, he, draw, he, he draws five drop into four drop. He drew Grey Merchant into Erebos and can't do anything. Yeah. And here we go. The Pack Rat plan is in action now. Steven B Rubin is down a game here, so... He'll be quite pleased to just pick up a, I mean, I'm not going to call it a free win or anything, but, you know, while his, mana, while his opponent's mana has only developed to two, and he's got an active pack rat with his opponent holding no answer and no castable spell. Also, those underworld connections are virtually dead at this point. Right, yeah, he just doesn't really have time to deploy them. Right. Um, now, like, even if he draws a land, there's probably not that much he can do here. He did draw a land. Yeah, so like he's kind of almost forced, he's priced into basically having to play the the connections and perhaps. Oh, okay. Uh, no, no, no. It's, yeah. I feel Spectre's a, a card, but still, it's just not big enough to tussle with the rats here. And the rats will now be out of bile blight range too once Steven Rubin uh, makes another copy of it. Yeah, and they're hitting for twelve this turn. I mean, it's, it's right. just not a lot of things. And, and that's going to do it. Yeah, the twelve, I believe, is the. Uh, no, you see. The block kind of scoop. Um, you don't <laughs> see that very often, <laughs> but maybe he went for it. <laughs> maybe he was just trying to kind of, you know, show that he he knew that he could probably survive an extra turn. Right. Okay, so we're now back at the uh, Oscar Jones Yu Yu Takahashi match. I think there must have been some mulligans here because it looks like one person is shuffling and the other is not. And it's been a while since they've been shuffling, so I think it might be Oscar is down to either six or five cards. Okay. Let's see how many cards that Oscar like puts in front of him. Five. Five. Well, this is not the greatest thing to to, to have like when you're. Um, he's shipping this one back. He's, he's shipping. He really had one land. He had some some four drops, he just couldn't really keep that. Um, uh, it's pretty brutal too. Yeah. I mean, the, the Mono Blue Devotion list is very clean in the sense that like it has one drops, two drops, three drops, and four drops. It doesn't go above that, generally speaking. And uh, I mean, it's a mono color deck, so the man is pretty easy. Like, you'd think that this deck would mulligan really well, but if there just aren't lands, you can't do anything about it. Right, and, 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 and it, it, because it's very temporal oriented, it doesn't have that much time to actually like find lands if it's short on lands. It's, it, it can't really hang around that much. It's, its cards get much worse in the mid-game. Totally, like drawing that, that 
fifth turn, you know, Cloudfin Raptor yeah. is just, ugh. No, nah, it's just not a good place. Let's take a look at our upcoming webcast schedule while we resolve these mulligans here. GPDC and GP Milan are both next weekend. Those are limited. We're going to be bringing you all of that. So if you, uh, if you have a little free time next weekend, g get on that couch, and we're going to be with you most hours of the day. GP Boston is uh, about a month later, and that leads up to the Pro Tour, August 1st through 3rd. All right, we're underway. Pack Rat on turn two for Yuta Takahashi. Okay. And a, a rather sad Cloudfin Raptor on turn two here from, from Oscar. It's, and yeah. is, th is this going to be just Pack Rat GG here? I, I or think it might be Pack Rat GG. Uh, the, the one thing I will say is that Oscar Jones does actually have a, a Spectre. So he's going to like do his best impression of curving out if he can draw another land here. Okay. In the meantime, but is that like his lucky token or something? <laughs> well, I mean, Yuya's like really well known for being a fairies player. So uh, like I think he's using some of the tokens that from like when he was playing a lot of fairies in, um, see. in extended. And Yuta is going to fire off a thought sees here. And he's going to see a pretty stacked up hand. Unfortunately, none of those spells are currently castable. And in they come, make a rat. Yeah. And unfortunately, I think we're going to see this one end pretty quickly here for Oscar Jones. If he can find a land, if he goes land, land, you know, maybe he changed them in to each other because because uh, the uh, master waves can be really nice, but he couldn't find one there. Yeah, I, I, I think that that's this is the final nail. Not, that's, I mean, mulling to four is bad enough, but like if your opponent has a essentially like pack rat and, and perfectly curving out, like he's it's just it's just too much, and so Oscar probably only has like maybe one more turn before he uh, succumbs to the rat army. Yeah, takes about a hundred damage there, and Oscar has to extend the hand. So yeah. tough beats there for Oscar Jones, not able to get past the quarterfinals. He did add a nice chunk of pro points to his uh, to his resume here for <coughs> this season, but he's got a little bit of work to do in these next two GPs if he wants to pick up that silver status. Yeah, it, it look, it, I think he needs to get like probably a top 32 or maybe a top 16 to, to really kind of give himself the best chance at silver here. Correct. So we're okay. back down to the, the Tyler <coughs> Bloom, Steven Rubin match. Yeah, we're back on our main, our main table here. And uh, we'll get those names switched over for you shortly here. But we've got a pack rat entering the red zone. What else is new? Yeah, so and I mean, it, that's it an underworld connection. It's not being discarded, it's actually being used, and there's Bio Blight to take out the rat. So, with the mono black against, uh, like, triumphing over the mono blue, and the other two uh, quarterfinals being um, mono black mirrors, so we, we're going to have at least three um, black based devotion decks. Um, and the other one is almost, oh, it's definitely going to be a blue-white deck. It's a, it is. It's, it's a, it's a blue-white mirror. Correct. Now, we, we saw a nice sequence there. Uh, there was an underworld connection. That got blown up before it could even get used. So that's always nice. Now, this one is not going to suffer that same fate, though. Yeah, I mean, like, it, at, at, the very, at the very least, Tyler is going to be able to draw one card. If uh, It looks like um, Steven does have a Golgari charm in, in hand, so... It, he can he can deal with the underworld connections. He's also got a thought seize. He's going to start off with thought seize. Take a look at another underworld connections, and he's going to yep. take that away. So pretty nice draw there, though. Yeah, he had he three he underworld connections drawn. Oh, he doesn't have a charm, though. Oh, he does not have the charm. Okay. Uh, so because I'm pretty sure he would cast it at that point. So. All right. So let's see if the train can keep rolling here. For Tyler. All, all Tyler needs is, like, probably three to four turns of, like, underworld connecting to really, really, like, make it hard for, like, Steven to come back. So Cr create some separation. Yeah. He it's really, really hard to come back after that point. 
And there's oh, Erebos as Erebos well. Too. And that does mean that he's not going to activate that Underworld Connections this turn. So a little bit of tempo lost there, but he also, well, two Erebos is now on the battlefield. The important part for uh, the Erebos also in, in this matchup is that um, it stops actually the life gain um, in the match. So things like Grey Merchant basically aren't as effective as they normally are. So Tyler playing one life, drawing another card here. I think that uh, Steve's a <coughs> little bit behind the eight ball, just because he's, he's he. I think he missed a land drop next last turn. Yep. Oh wow! So th so he actually drew a specter, which gave him devotion. Allowing him to tack with his huge Erebos. Yeah, five power crashing into the red zone there. Those are the type of life total chunks that are pretty tough to get back and make. Yeah, t Tyler looks like he's, he's kind of... It looks like he's in the driver's seat yeah, here. I mean, is he going to hit with the Night Vale Spectre as well this turn? I mean... Yeah, he, I mean, yeah, I, I think he, he will. Uh, there's a duress to see if the coast is clear. Um, okay. Steve cast his his devour flesh and it looks like the mutavault's going to take one for right. the team here for Tyler Bloom and hit the bin but that leaves him still with active Erebos and still with the night veil specter that he can attack with right but there's uh, no targets for yeah. the duress there yeah just another Erebos and two more gray merchants those um, merchants are pretty interesting but uh this could just be over so quickly here yeah I mean, and 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 I think that one of the big key things is that the um the merchants themselves don't gain life, and if they, because of the error, the opposing oh yeah, error absolutely. Versus, that's a huge deal. Make it really, really hard for them to come back. Yeah, totally. Also, Erebos incredibly difficult to get rid of. Even in creature mode, it's most vulnerable, but even then, it takes a few very specific circumstances or answers. And Tyler Bloom is going to bolster his late game here with a second underworld connections, and I think we're yep. going to see a concession no, here. So, so Tyler there Bloom advances. He does. So Tyler Bloom. Puts together the win here. Yeah, and, and and really in the face of like I would say a slightly bad matchup. Just I think when you think about the fact that Steve Steve Rubin can actually like remove his opponent's uh, connections. I mean he didn't draw it unfortunately. He 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 was he ended up with uh, a connections like landing and able to like really pull away. All right, so we've got one, two, three now of our competitors advance to the semifinals and to the shock of absolutely no one, the blue-white control mirror is still <laughs> going. Um, Steven actually uh, beat Adrian in the, in the Swiss, so...